Hey, what is up everybody? I wanted to sort of go over what a FSRM looks like when they AoE. Oh, this guy's trying to kill me. Um, and the reason I wanted to make this video is because it can be a little confusing. I've noticed, at least when I start leveling, um, a lot of people are like, they come by and they're like, how are you able to do this? I don't understand. Um, because typically there's like two types of RMs, as you know, there's a FSRM, which is a full support ringmaster, and they, um, they basically specialize in full intelligence and healing, casting speed, uh, so they can heal you faster and pretty much at the sacrifice of all of their stats, right? Um, they shouldn't really be able to um, AoE, per se. Um, so, um, however, I am an FSRM, or at least I'm built like an FSRM, and I'm still able to AoE, and it confuses people. So I'm going to kind of walk through my explanation of how to AoE as an FSRM. Um, it's it's doable. It's not the most viable thing ever. I think right now, as level 122, I get about 13 to close to 15% per hour if I if I really focus, um, which actually isn't that horrible. I think that, you know, amped, that aligns with almost um, what uh, getting level or having a leveling partner would be. So... Um, yeah, let's walk through it. So my armor right now is the necklace, necklace set. Um, pretty common. I know it's expensive, but if you're going to be over level 105, um, having higher gear, especially plussed up to eight or eight, nine or ten, is going to um, greatly increase your chances of actually AOEing because you get that you get that block chance, increased HP, all stats, um, increased attack. Um, and not only that, but the defense is a lot better in this set. Um, and I have it pierced with two 4% HP cards, so nothing crazy. Um, nothing nothing nuts. Um, pretty run-of-the-mill stuff here. I'm wearing a 5% suit, well, 10% suit set. Um, that's not really necessary if you run sprints. Um, the difference is more minimal than you think i've actually done it with or without and it doesn't really make a difference so um int cloak and then a lg stick um preferably you'd want to go bloody um i just haven't been able to a craft one or b afford one as you can see i have i'm very broke <laughs> um at the moment so uh but the good thing about the legendary golden stick is a couple of things it, that plays to your benefit while AoEing, and that is have healing at 30% on the stick. It, has, it comes with 10, and I have have 20% added. Um, so if you do get hit, you can actually heal yourself right now. I think two heals will heal me entirely, meaning if I get hit a bunch of times and I'm down to like 10%, just heal, heal, which is at this rate, an incredibly fast casting speed, I'm back to full. So it actually plays to your benefit um, to some degree. Obviously, the bloody stick is going to be a little bit better in that case. But anyway, uh, entering uh, my rings aren't that impressive right now. So 11, 11, a plus six mental ring, a plus seven plug and a plus 13 uh, until ring. So I'm running like, what is that? Uh, 20, 30, 30 plus intelligence on rings alone. Um, so really not that much. Um, and that's it. That's all my gear. Um, as far as tactics go, this is where it gets a little crazy. So you want to run prevention for sure. Um, prevention recovers your HP uh, if it reaches below 15% at max. But the monsters in Azria in particular hit you extremely hard. So um, I have a way around this because if they hit you if you're at, let's say, for instance, 16% HP and you get crit and it just kills you, it will not trigger prevention. Um, you have to be at an HP that is on or lower than 15%. So you have to be careful because if you run into a, a bunch of mobs and they all crit you, which happens a lot in Azria, um, you'll just die. <laughs> it's happened a few times, even with the thing I'm going to show you, but... I've gone, I mean, last night I did like two hours of leveling, didn't happen once. So it, it's safe to say it's a pretty rare phenomenon if you do it right. So the first thing I do is I start with um, with GT because um, this gives you increased attack, which helps you hit mobs faster and run. If you have slow attack, you hit them and then you run. 
it's a little bit of a slower process. Um, so let's let's do like a small mob first, and I'll show you kind of what people tend to do. So they'll grab a few mobs like this, right? And they'll go, okay, I'm getting hit kind of hard. The crits are a little insane. That's probably all I can handle. All right, let's AOE, right? And then you kind of just heal yourself and make sure you don't die. So this is what a lot of people do um, when they're AOEing as ringmasters. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, and then you could also opt for the hit and run method where you just kite them. Kite them around, you do your AOE, and you never get hit, right? But you gotta make sure you're killing them fast enough. So there's a couple of game mechanics that you have to keep in mind. One of which is when you have over, I think it's, I think it's like 14 mobs. There's a 28 second um, buffer of time that you have to kill them or they have to land a hit on you um, before they despawn. So this is a problem for hit and run, right? So as an FSRM, there's no way you can tank AoE. Like more than what I just showed you, you could maybe maybe get like a couple of more, um, but it's not really gonna, it's not gonna help. <laughs> like it'll be slow leveling, trust me, I've done it. Um, you wanna go for the hit and run. Um, but you want to hit them hard enough. So I hit these guys pretty hard. Um, they're currently a level below me, but if I if I match my level and go with the darks, um, the dark yetis, it's about the same. So this is just for, I just want to show you. Um, so hit and run is the way to go. Um, but here's the catch. So what I usually do, I'll start, I'll open with GT, and I'll gather a bunch. Trying to make sure that the reds don't hit me too hard. See if I can get all three. Here we go. Heal. Okay, so at the moment, these guys will probably kill me if I run into them. That's a lot. Okay. So, I'm going to throw down this. I'm going to keep running. Now I'm going to throw Holy Guard on me, and I'm just going to run through the pack here. Watch. And you notice, I mean, that was cutting it pretty close, but it triggered prevention. And I'm at full health, so I'll recast prevention, and then I'll hit, I'll kite them like this. Now, if you stick to this method, I can guarantee you. Holy crap, that might be close. Wee. Okay. Um, if you stick to this method, I can guarantee that you'll never lose your aggro, um, as long as you're doing pretty good damage, which, as you can see, I'm doing pretty decent damage. Nothing crazy. Um, and that's it. So that's the strategy, is is you want to GT as you're open, you want to make sure that your prevention's up, right? You gather too many, okay? Enough, try to calculate it in your head. Okay, like maybe six, maybe seven will probably kill me. So 14 is my max now, because with prevention, you go up to full and then back down to zero. So you've actually just doubled the amount of mobs you can tank uh, simply by making sure that Holy Guard is up. If you don't, if you do not Holy Guard, I'm telling you right now, especially in Azria, this is not going to work for you. Um, they will crit. The crits in Azria are like no other. They will crit you a lot. Um, so you got to make sure that you're paying attention to that. Um, with that being said, you also want to make sure that your Holy Guard is up before you even start. So. So that's pretty much it. Um, we're going to Holy Guard. Run through. Just like that. And now, the timer's reset. Right, we GT. Make sure we get that extra damage. And we just kite him around. Now, if you did this without running through the mobs, um, you could probably handle about as many as I grabbed here. But if you get kind of fancy with it, um, you can definitely uh, pull a lot more, like an impressive amount. Oh my. Almost just died. This is a bad example. I'm distracted and talking, so this is kind of hard, but you get the idea. And that's it. Um, I hope that was informative to you. Um, I know a lot of that is probably kind of self-explanatory, but uh, I just want to show you like my method on how I do it. Um, 
you know, running, gathering about as many as you think would kill you, doubling it, HG, run through it with prevention. You don't have to get all of them. The, the ones that you just hit, that's why you saw me kind of curve to the back of the mobs. Um, because the ones you just hit, their timer's pretty close to at the beginning, right? But the ones all the way in the back are probably about to despawn on you relatively quickly, like within at least 10, 15 seconds, which isn't enough to AOE a big, bigger, bigger mob. Now, if you're clever, you can sort of go up to like seven or eight and get hit without HG, right? And then gather like 20 more, and then you'll have like 25, and then you'll throw prevention, HG on, hit the back side of the mobs and only get like half of that, or maybe a little under half, kind of calculate it in your head. And then you've successfully reset the timer on all of these mobs up to like 20. I did it last night, I was doing it all night. I wish I had some more videos because I was on fire. But you know, you get in that zone, and uh, you, you know you pop your amp and your if you if you want to pop premiums you can I have I usually do an upcut stone um, and a defense upcut um, as well as sprints tend to help especially with this method um, I don't always do that that way but it helps so anyway thanks for watching I appreciate you guys and uh, we'll see you in the next video.